Welcome back to the Data Science Mentor, where I help you become and grow as a data scientist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and properly set up Python 3 on your machine. So let's get started. Before I proceed with the rest of this video, I want to note that this video is for Mac users with the latest Mac OS, which is Catalina. If you have an older Mac OS and just don't wish to upgrade to Catalina, then the process of installing and setting up Python 3 is a little different for you. So I have created a different version of this video for you, which you can find the link to in the description below. And now having said that, let's continue with the rest of this video. Last week, someone contacted me on LinkedIn and wanted to pick my brain about a project that he has been working on, but I was surprised when I found that he was still using Python 2. Now, Python 2 stopped being supported starting from this past January of 2020, and while your code would work and run, but if any security issues arise with any of the packages that you're using, this would compromise your project or solution because nobody will be working on fixing these issues. So if you're aspiring to become a data scientist, then there's no reason whatsoever for you to continue using Python 2. You should switch to Python 3 right now. While some people may recommend installing a platform like Anaconda and using the Python that's packaged with it because it comes with other standard Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, I'm actually a big advocate of you setting up your own Python environment and using pip to install Python libraries and packages over Anaconda. Anaconda might be a good option if you'll be working on toy problems, but if you'll be doing serious data science work, building your own solutions and dashboards, then setting up your own Python environment is the right way to go. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. And just a final note before we get started, if you run into any error for some reason, Please don't worry, just comment and share the error message in the comments section below and I'll make sure to respond and help you out. Okay, and now I'm going to switch over to the computer and walk you through the process of setting up Python 3 on your machine. So let's do it. All right, so we'll be using Terminal throughout the process of setting up Python 3. Now, if you haven't used Terminal before and it's not in the dock, if you go to Applications, then Utilities, you should find it there. So drag it and add it to the dock so you can easily access it as you will be using it quite often, if not daily from now on. All right, so I'm just gonna start terminal and zoom in to make this larger. Now, when you start terminal for the first time, you might see a message on the top here that says something like, your default interactive shell is now ZSH, which stands for the Z shell, or the Z shell, the American way. <laughs> but I'm Canadian, so I'm just gonna stick with the Z shell. And it asks you to run this command, change shell, then ZSH. Well, in macOS Catalina, Apple is moving from the bash shell to a new Z shell. They're not very different, but your default shell will determine where we place some shell commands or paths to some shell scripts that we want to be executed or sourced every time we start terminal. Now, I'll come back to this point later, but for now, if you see this message, just go ahead and run this command to make the Z shell your default shell. Now, I have already done this, and that's why you see ZSH on the top of my terminal window. Otherwise, this would show bash instead. Cool. Now, if I type Python, it should start the Python interpreter. And if you haven't used it before, you can actually run any Python code here. You can run import statements, for example, import numpy as mp, print statements, print hello python, and literally any other Python code. But it's all in Python too, because it's the default. So it's good to know that such interpreter exists in terminal, as it can come in handy when you want to test something in Python really quickly. And another way to check what version of Python is the default is to run python dash dash version. And again, it shows that Python 2 is the default version. Now, if I type Python 3, I will be prompted to install the command line developer tools, which means that Python 3 is available. If it wasn't available, 
you would get something like command not found. Now, although Python 3 is available, but there's a lot of limitation with the one shipped with macOS Catalina, and it would be difficult to properly set it up so that it becomes the default. Instead, we will get Python 3 from a package manager. Now, there are two package managers for macOS. There is Macports and Homebrew. Since Homebrew is more user-friendly, we will use it as the package manager to install Python 3. However, Homebrew requires a compiler to install its packages. With macOS, we can get the compiler by installing Xcode. And for those of you who don't know, Xcode is a development environment for macOS and has all the tools you would need to build anything on a Mac machine. So although you're prompted to install the command line tools to get Python 3 to work, I actually recommend that you install Xcode as a handful of the packages offered by Homebrew require the full Xcode and not just the command line tools. And so to install Xcode, I'm just gonna cancel this first and then go to the App Store. Now make sure you're signed into your account. And if you don't have an Apple ID yet, you can create one by simply clicking here on the Create Apple ID button and following the prompts and instructions. They're pretty straightforward, so you should be able to create one easily. And once you're logged in, in the search field, type Xcode and enter. And Xcode should be the first result that's returned. So click on it and then click the download button. Now this will actually take a couple of hours to download. So I'm just gonna let it download and we'll proceed as soon as it's done. All right, and now that Xcode is all downloaded, let's open it and accept the license agreement. And now Xcode will work on completing the installation of some components. So it might take another few minutes. And once Xcode is all installed, you should get this welcome screen. So let's close it and switch back to terminal and run the following command to install the command line developer tools. This should prompt us to install the command line tools. So click install and accept the command line tools agreement. And this should take a few minutes to download and install the command line tools. Cool. And now that Xcode and the command line tools are installed, the next step is to install Homebrew, which is the package manager. So to install it, we will have to go to the Homebrew website. So I'm going to start my browser and Google Homebrew. Click here and on the landing page, we should find the command to run to install Homebrew. So I'm going to copy this, switch back to terminal, paste and run. Now, what's beautiful about the script that installs Homebrew is that it tells you exactly what it will do before it does it. And so it prompts you for your confirmation throughout the installation process. And so here it's asking for our permission to create these new directories. So let's hit enter, type your password, and we'll just wait for the installation process to complete. All right, and when you see this, you know that Homebrew has been successfully installed. And now the final step is to install Python, and we do that by running the command brew install python. Now this will take a minute. And with this, the process of installing Python 3 is complete. Now one important thing to note here is that Homebrew already created links so that Python points to Python 3 and so makes it the default when we run the Python command. But the links are placed in this directory. So we need to add it to the top of our path. Otherwise, the system Python 2 will continue to be invoked first. So what we will do is we will add an export command to our Z shell run commands file, updating our path with this directory to make sure that our path is properly set up every time we start terminal. And for those of you who don't know, the Z shell run commands file is a hidden file that should sit in your home directory that would contain any shell commands or scripts that you would want to be executed or sourced every time you start terminal. Now I'm already in my home directory. If you're not, you navigate to it by running CD tilde. And now let's list the contents of our home directory to check if the hidden Z shell run commands file exists. So we will run ls, but the command ls lists only the files that are not hidden. So to list the contents of our home directory, including the hidden files, we need to use the all or a option. And so we need to run ls-a. 
And now all the files that have a dot at the beginning of their names are hidden files. So we have Z shell history, but we don't have Z shell run commands. Now, if your default is still bash and not the Z shell, then you will need to look for the bash profile file instead of the Z shell run commands file. And that's why earlier on in this video, I said that your default shell will determine where you place the shell commands that you want to be executed every time you start terminal. Now, since we don't have the Z shell run commands file in our home directory, we will have to create one. And we can do that using any editor like Emacs, Vim, or nano now i prefer emacs but since some of you may not have it i'll use vim instead so we will run vim dot z sh for shell r for run and c for commands and again the dot at the beginning is to make the file hidden but before we run this command let me copy this directory and now run the command to create the z shell run commands file now vim has two modes insert mode and command mode insert mode lets you add modify or manipulate a file and command mode lets you run commands such as saving changes or quitting and exiting the file when you run the vim command to create or open a file you open the file in command mode and so you can't make any changes to the file so if i try to type something you will hear this sound indicating that I cannot manipulate the file. Now by pressing I, we switch to insert mode, and now we can make changes to the file. So let's add an export command and set our path to be the directory that has the links to Python 3 first, and then append it with the rest of the current path. Okay, we're done here. So now to save and exit, we switch to command mode by pressing escape and we type colon wq, where w is to write and save the changes and q is to exit or quit the file. So hit enter. And now let's quit terminal for the changes to take effect and restart it. And now if we run Python, it should start the interpreter in Python 3. Isn't that cool? Let me exit this. And if we run Python dash dash version, it should confirm that Python 3 is now the default. Now, if we run ls dash a again, we should find the z shell run commands file in our home directory. And if we run cat dot z shrc, it should print the export command that we just added to it. Cool. And finally, let's run pip dash dash version to confirm that pip is properly configured and is linked to Python 3. Cool. And now any Python package we install through pip should be the version that's compatible with Python 3. And so now we have Python 3 installed and is the default version. We have pip properly configured and is linked to Python 3. And with this, you should have Python 3 all set up on your machine and pip working so that you can start installing all the Python libraries and packages that you think you will need to start working on projects. Now in the next video, I'll walk you through the process of setting up your GitHub account, which is the second tool that I mentioned in the video on how to get started with becoming a data scientist. So make sure to subscribe to get notified when I put up the next video. I'll see you next time.